You're listening to the King's Place podcast. Kingsplace.co.uk Hi and welcome to the sixth in a series of mini edition podcasts looking at the King's Place Festival 2011. This runs from Thursday the 8th to Sunday the 11th of September. This is the fourth King's Place Festival and the unique formula of 100 concerts in just four days gives you a series of exciting speed dates with King's Place's yearly programme. Brilliant young pianist Ivana Gavrich explores the work of Janacek to coincide with the release of a new CD called Janacek from the Street. We caught up with her in a dressing room at King's Place to learn more. Well, it's been a a year-long survey, if you like, of Janacek's works. I just found his music very immediate and uh, very striking, full of melody, and I wanted to explore more. Of course, the repertoire is very limited which in a way is also quite nice for a pianist to say you've played all the works of one composer. It rarely happens. So I put on a mini-series um, at the start of this year um, at the Forge uh, covering his solo piano works and the smaller chamber ensembles and the, and the song cycle, The Diary of One Who Disappeared. And then this wonderful opportunity arose to um, uh, collaborate with the Aurora Orchestra and play his uh, larger ensemble pieces. So we're doing the formidable Capriccio for piano left hand, uh, flute and brass ensemble, which is rarely performed and it was very exciting and concertino which is a septet piano and uh, six instruments and also mladi the wind sextet and we're also repeating the diary of one who disappeared and the pohatka cello and piano work the very famous uh, violin sonata and i'll also be playing the first of october 1905 the so-called piano sonata It does seem to be a great sense of history or reasoning behind the, the music that he's composed. Yes, some of some of his uh, works that we're performing um, were inspired by real events. So, for example, the, the piano sonata was inspired by a tragic event where a young labourer was uh, stabbed to death when protesting for um, a building of a Czech-speaking university. Some works, like Pohadka for cello and piano, are inspired by literature, or at least uh, the impulse behind it was literary, um, the, inspired by Zhukovsky's epic um, tale of Tsar Beredny. And some pieces, he only invented the programmatic uh, links afterwards, were well, invented. We perhaps shouldn't take them too seriously. For example, the concertino, he says uh, the first movement uh, is a grumpy hedgehog and the second movement is a um, <laughs> chatting um, noisy squirrel and the third movement which I love uh, this description um, are owls and other creatures of the night staring into into the strings of the piano with their slightly stupid and bewildered eyes but again this was written two years after the piece was composed so I'm not sure how seriously to take this but it's still it's, it's a very sweet anecdote. What, what is it generally that you like about Janacek? Maybe what you've grown into over the, over this year so far? I think what has always drawn me to him are, is the melodic aspect. It's so rich in melody, often folk-inspired, and so, so full of love, really. Although some of his textures are perhaps a bit fractured or febrile, it's still very romantic um, music. It's, uh, you really feel this heart pouring out. He's a very immediate composer, and... And I've always found that he just draws me in immediately. He's not like anyone else that I can think of. Have you had a, because it's more slightly more unusual repertoire, have you had a, an interesting response to the people who've come and heard you so far? Yes, well, I mean, I started off in a way this, this whole exploration because I found an initial resistance from performing venues outside London to uh, programme some of his works. Although his operas have become pretty much a standard repertoire, it's only really a few pieces that get performed on the solo piano repertoire and the uh, chamber works. Uh, so, for example, the Capriccio is hardly ever 
performed, possibly because it's, it's immensely difficult for all forces involved. But also people are slightly resistant to his music. I think if, if I've managed to convince some people that his music is really worth listening to or expanded the, the range of his music that they listen to, then that's wonderful. So it's, been a, it's been a really fantastic sort of journey this year, getting to know him more and his personality really comes through his work. And, getting to know the, the various stages of his work as well, because he was, a, as the Brits call him, an anti-prodigy. Um, he really <laughs> tended to come into his life and became a very well-known figure only in the last 10 years of his life. And solo piano repertoire comes from the start of this period when he finally develops his own voice, and, and then you get these chamber works, and then you get the fantastic operas. So it sort of grows from there, and it's, it's a wonderful journey. And, and I believe you've got a CD release coming out around this time, which has, has some of this music. That's right. So following from In the Mist, which was on my first uh, disc, I recorded uh, the set on an overgrown path. And the 1st of October from the street, um, the so-called Sonata. And also I wanted to put these pieces in context. So I've always been really fascinated by this early 1900s where music seemed to be going in all sorts of directions but at the same time artists were from different genres were coming together and and putting on these wonderful works especially for the ballet russe for example and um so i've recorded prokofiev's second sonata and ravel's vast noble sentimental um to very special composers also for me that I've grown up listening to. and um, I've, I was going to also mention your, your career seems to be doing extremely wonderfully. I mean, you recently, you were the newcomer of the year at the BBC uh, Music Magazine for 2011. That's, that's not a bad thing, really. No, it's been it's been such a wonderful year, and it's it's very nice to be back here at King's Place where where the awards were held. Um, well, it's very exciting to be getting all these opportunities that I've always dreamed of doing. But yes, of course, it adds a little bit of extra pressure. But um, I'm loving every minute.